Hello, I'm JW. This time we're going to have a look at circuits, and uh, circuits as in what you would install in your house with the mains wiring. And this particular episode is on radial circuits, which uh, just happens to be the most common type. Now this does apply to the UK, although of course uh, principles are similar elsewhere, but uh, this is specifically in the UK type of arrangement. Now uh, radial circuits uh, are certainly the most common, and in fact nearly all circuits are radials. The only ones which are not are of course the ring circuit, which is a thing created by Lucifer himself, and we'll be looking at that in another video. But uh, essentially a radial circuit will start from your consumer unit, or fuse box, or whatever you've got, and then that will go to one or more outlets or pieces of equipment. And in your consumer unit you're going to have uh, several connections inside, you're going to have a bar at the top for the neutral and the uh, earth, and you're going to have several protective devices. I would just say there's a uh, circuit breaker in here. So in the case of this one, we'll call this the uh, neutral. And we'll put the earth one over here. And of course the line will actually come out of the circuit breaker itself. Typically you'll have a main switch and other stuff in there, so your line connection will be out of the top of the circuit breaker or fuse or whatever it is you've got. And uh, the simplest possible option is just to have the cable coming out of there and going to a piece of equipment, or say for example in this case you might have a socket outlet. So double socket there, and your cables would come out of the neutral, connect onto the neutral bar there. Line, of course, will be from the top of the circuit breaker. And the earth would come off the earth uh, bar there as well. And of course, normally those would be contained within a single cable, although you could use singles in conduit or whatever else you liked. So essentially, that's going to be a single cable contained there. And in the simplest possible option, these wires would just simply connect into the socket or whatever it is you've got at the end of the circuit. So that's a basic radial circuit, and in this case it only supplies a single piece of equipment or socket outlet here. But of course in real world it's fairly likely they're going to have to want to have more than one socket outlet in your house. And for a radial circuit then it's very simple. If we wanted to have say another socket over here, of a similar style. And in terms of connection it's just simply extending the three wires across to the next socket outlet. So we could extend across the neutral here, and of course the line as well in the brown, and the earth or protective conductor would continue into the next socket. So uh, that's pretty much how you would add a second item, and you can actually continue adding as many of these as you want. So it's just a question of continuing the same three wires to the next outlet and the next and so on. And the important thing to note here is that uh, when you get to the end of the circuit, as in say this one here, that's pretty much it. There's nothing else to do, as the radio circuit starts here at the consumer unit, and it ends at whatever's at the end of the circuit over here, so another socket in this case. Now in an ideal world that's how a radio circuit will be designed, but there are a couple of other options, and uh, one of which uh, is really not ideal, but uh, it does happen a fair bit. And you might want to put, say, another socket over here. We'll make this a single, just because we can. Now you could take the wires from this one and go over to this one, but of course if this was on the other side of the house or something, then that's not desperately convenient. So what you can do is to extend the wires from a socket that's nearer, so we can have the uh, neutral coming across, and of course the uh, line there, and the earth or protective conductor as well. So though it's sort of got two branches there, it's still a radial circuit because it's starting here and ending either here or here in this case. And again, if you wanted, you could add another one, say, further on from that one. And again, the wires would simply extend through, just as I did for the other ones. And again, that can continue on here, and that can continue there, and in theory you could have one coming off the side and uh, one off of here as well. And uh, really the point is it doesn't actually matter what the layout is. Say, in terms of a new installation, it would be ideal if they just went from one to the other in a nice uh, sequence. 
but of course in the real world that's not always practical. And certainly if you're going to be adding things to an existing circuit then uh, obviously it's uh, usually far more convenient to uh, connect to the nearest outlet. Just say to add another one or two or however many it is on there. Now in terms of the actual connections there, in the back of a typical socket outlet, something like, uh, something like this, and uh, in the back of there you'll have the three terminals, and they're quite often spaced in uh, ridiculous patterns here, so we'll uh, just draw the back of the socket here. Got two holes for mounting purposes, and the earth is usually a uh, metal strap that actually goes between those two holes, and then there's tabs that come down into the individual earth holes there, and you quite often find that say the uh, other terminals are located in rather odd positions. So you have your earth terminal here, this might be the line here, and then the neutral over there, and typically on the back here you'll have the uh, sort of plastic moulding or whatever forming the back of the socket. And in terms of the cabling attachment then uh, very straightforward, if you've got two cables which will be one in from the consumer unit, and then one going out to the additional or next socket, then the uh, cables would come in, so your earth would come in to the earth terminal here, and of course the neutral would come in, go to the uh, neutral point there, and the line would also go into the line terminal here. And then to extend on to the next socket, again you're going to have the same three conductors, so it's just a question of connecting them to the exact same terminal, so again the green would go on that one there, the neutral blue would go here, and the line would go to the same point on that one, and that would continue on to the next socket outlet. And if necessary you could connect a third one in here, again exactly the same, so your line would come off say down here to a third cable, and the neutral there, and of course the earth uh, there as well. The only restriction here really is how many wires you can actually get into the terminals and secure satisfactorily. Generally three is going to be about the limit, possibly four on some with uh, bigger terminals, but anything about that just uh, getting a bit silly. And certainly if you go above four you're only going to have difficulty A fitting them in, and of course uh, B difficulty fitting them and making sure that the uh, screw actually holds them securely. But generally two or three wires is not a major problem. Now in terms of how that connects in the consumer unit, you're going to have your main switch on one side or the other, and your main incoming wires here, the uh, line and the neutral going into the top of there, and the earth connection will just come in as a separate uh, conductor there onto the earthing bar at the top. And out of the bottom of the main switch you're going to have the neutral here coming out, going up to the bar usually at the top there, and the line comes through and then that goes either into the bottom of your circuit breakers here, or whatever other devices you've got, so fuses or other type devices. And in terms of connection then, as we saw at the beginning, the neutral from the cable will simply connect onto the neutral bar at the top here, that will go off in part of your cable. Uh, the earth would also connect onto the bar there as well, and that would normally go off into the same cable. And then the line connects to the top of the protective device, so we'll uh, go for this one in this case, and again that will go off and again be part of the cable going out to the devices connected. And notice on these when the uh, stoker breaker is actually switched off, it's only the line that's disconnected, the neutral remains connected all the time, and of course your other circuits would connect here as well. And likewise, of course, the earth is permanently connected onto that bar as well. So this is why if you're going to isolate the circuit, just switching off the circuit breaker, not really isolating it because you've only just disconnected one of the wires, the neutral, of course, is still connected over there. Now if you're going to have an RCBO, which is essentially a circuit breaker and an RCD combined, then the connections are slightly different. The devices themselves are normally uh, somewhat taller, they fit onto the bar in the same fashion, and the line goes into the bottom of the device just in the same way there. But the uh, neutral on these is actually provided through the device because it has to actually monitor the current in the line and the neutral. So what you get with these is usually a separate neutral lead coming out of the side of the device, and then that is what connects up to the neutral bar at the top there. And then for the uh, circuit cabling, the earth again just connects to the earth bar in the usual way there. The line connects into the top of the RCBO device, and so does the neutral for the circuit as well. So in the case of those then all three again go into the same cable, 
but uh, both the line and the neutral go into the RCBO device and that's hence it can monitor the current flowing on both the neutral and the line as well. So with the uh, circuit brake here it's basically line in at the bottom, goes out to the circuit, power comes back on the or current back on the neutral wire there, flows via here and back to the supply whereas on the RCBO again it's going at the bottom out to the circuit, when it comes back it's going through the RCBO so it can monitor the current there via this additional lead and then back via the main switch and the actual incoming supply. Now this is just an example of a uh, circuit with some uh, socket outlets on it, but uh, again most circuits are actually radials, so apart from uh, say rings which uh, are completely different we'll deal with those another time. And uh, another common type of circuit uh, typically used for radials are the ones that supply cookers and electric showers, and the only difference there is really you generally only have one item of equipment at the end of it rather than uh, say several like this. And if it was for a cooker then of course it would be a uh, separate circuit, so it would have a separate uh, circuit breaker in the box there. And at the end of it you would typically have a isolating switch of some kind, and then you'd have an outlet plate where the cable to the cooker would be connected. And just as with the other one, it's a question of just connecting the wires as appropriate. So from the line conductor would go into the switch, and then your cable would come out of there and go to the outlet plate. And again, the neutral would be a similar sort of arrangement. So into the isolator switch and into the outlet plate. And again, the earth would come from here to the isolator and then again to the outlet plate. And then your cooker would just connect to this uh, generally a box on the wall, and then you have the uh, flex or whatever coming out going to the cooker or oven or whatever it is that you have. But uh, exactly the same arrangement starting here at the consumer unit, uh, cable going to the isolator switch there, and then just onto the actual outlet box where the cooker would be connected. And the other one, most common in uh, certainly houses anyway, would be an electric shower. And again, it's pretty much the same deal. You'd have your cable coming out of there to some kind of isolator switch, either a wall mounted or possibly one of those in the ceiling pull cord varieties. And then from the switch your cables just go out to the electric shower on the wall. And again it's a radial circuit because it say starts here and just goes out and ends at the particular piece of equipment. So that's a quick look at radial circuits, and as I said at the beginning there, most circuits are actually radials, it's only uh, dreadful ring circuits which are a UK type of thing and that really should have been discontinued a long time ago, but uh, we'll look at those in a separate video. And uh, we didn't look at lighting circuits there, but lighting circuits are radials as well, but they do have the additional parts to consider of things like switches, so you can turn the lights on and off, it's a, word, a handy feature to have, so again we'll look at that in a separate video. And in terms of what sort of size of cables things to use, you can of course uh, calculate those, but for most type of domestic ones you can simply have a look in this book, and the most common types of uh, circuit are actually already printed in there, so in many cases it's just a question of looking in there to see what sort of size cable is appropriate for the type of circuit you're installing, though of course you can uh, calculate those individually if you want to, but of course in many circumstances that's not actually necessary. So until next time, thanks for watching.